So, may I begin? Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming here this afternoon. It was exactly four weeks ago today, minus 87 minutes, that David told me that he wanted to become the new manager of Manchester United. And from that time, uh, the football club has continued on a long and exhaustive journey to find the right man to take this club forward. During the four weeks, I have to say, I've met some of the finest individuals you could possibly meet in football. The finest of them is sitting next to me now, and it's a great relief, joy, and it is seriously exciting to me that Roberto Martinez has agreed to be the next manager of Everton Football Club. I just want to say one thing before I ask Roberto to say a few words. Right at the start of this, when I was doorstepped um, a couple of hours after David had left, I said um, that the fans would play an important part in uh, the choice of the next manager. And I've listened to the fans uh, for the last four weeks, and their voices have come over loud and clear. And I'm very pleased to say that in the end they've said, look, you got it right last time, we leave it to you, 90% of them will. To the Evertonians, and this is what this appointment is all about, if you'd been at the meetings, the conversations that I've had with your new manager, you would be as thrilled, as excited, as buoyed, and as in awe as I have been. It's been a great introduction for the pair of us. And again, great words. The new manager of Everton Football Club, Roberto Martinez. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Well, there's not much I want to say apart from saying that it's a real, real special day to come into Everton Football Club and have this feeling already of excitement, of honour, and just I would like to thank the chairman and the board to give me this opportunity because this is a phenomenal and a passionate football club and I can't wait to get soaked with everything that it means Everton and make sure that we, we start working and playing football to be extremely, extremely proud. Thank you. So I think we're going to throw ourselves open to questions. Now, would that be about right? Can we just stop the flashing for a few moments? Fraser, you'd like to kick off. Roberto, it uh, seems like it's taken quite a while, but we um, finally got the, the deal done and got the job. There have been numerous opportunities over the past few years for you to perhaps join other clubs. So why was it that you decided that Everton was the right one for you? Well, it's, uh, it's simple. It's just it came in a natural way. I know that it's been a lot of talking. Most of that talking has always been in the outside, in the media. Um, it's been a phenomenal time at Wigan. Uh, I enjoyed every single second of it. After four seasons, this was the right time. And after I met the chairman, I knew that Everton was the right football club. So it's been just a, a natural transition and it's the right time now to, to, to be involved in, in such an exciting challenge. You're filling a very big pair of boots in David Moyes having left for Manchester United. Um, how much pressure does that put on you? Because clearly, Boyd is a big hero here for many, many years, and you'll be expected to do similarly great things. Yes, huge pressure, and, and but I'm I'm extremely proud of that pressure because that means that what David Moyes has done at, at Everton in the last 11 years is set real standards, and what is produced is given a, an incredible platform for the next man to continue. And I feel that I'm. I'm very, very lucky and very fortunate to be able to carry on that work that is done over the years. But what clearly, what is done is giving Everton an identity, is giving uh, an incredible, incredible standards. And all I want to do is try to be uh, humble enough and, 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 and hardworking enough to take that, that magnificent job into the next level. How much of a wrench was it for you to leave Wigan? 
Well, it's always it's always difficult. I always been every time you're involved in football, um, I believe in in human relationships, and you create them. And, and it's never easy to break those relationships. And I hope that for the future I can build that relationship at, at Everton, and and we can be a real strong unit from the fans to the board to the chairman to everyone that is in the football staff and and the players. And we need to become that unit. And it's always difficult when you break down. But it's the right time. Is um, I believe that that um, is Wigan got a great future ahead. It, it was the right time to have a new, a new, uh, a fresh energy around the place as well. So all I'm excited, I'm looking forward is what we can do at Everton and how quickly we can become a very strong unit and a winning unit on the football pitch with with the incredible support that this football club has. Dave Whelan said at the time when you said that you wanted to leave or decided to leave that you said you felt you weren't equipped to be able to take Wigan back up. What was meant by that and what is the difference between doing that and being at a, a top Premier League? Club? Well, we had um, the, I, my period at Wigan is only, it's not been only four years as a manager, it's been ten years in one way or another. Having ten years with a football club is, is a big part of your career and your life and I just felt that it was the right time after four uh, very special years to to move on. Uh, the circumstances at the club now are completely different. They're going to play in Europe. They're going to be uh, trying to get out of the championship as quick as they can. And I felt that probably a new man needs to take that job on on, on board. And for me, it was time to 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 look into a different challenge and carry on with uh, with a completely different different football club and obviously from that point on it was clear that the only club that I felt I could fit in it was was Everton and and that that was a feeling that wasn't a decision that was just meeting the chairman seeing him so passionate about this football club it got me involved in wanting to know more and 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 see what we can achieve in the future and and just I can way to, to get started but it, it, that's just walking here today at Goodison Park it really f- feels a special place for the future for me. Bill you said that uh, you were in awe of Roberto a few minutes ago what are your hopes and your expectations for Roberto and what you hope you can achieve? It's always difficult that question isn't it because you don't want to put the X on the man who's just <laughs> literally been sitting there for 20 seconds but when David first came to see me David Moyes 11 years and however many hours ago, um, he sat down and we were in a bad state and he said, first words, you're not going down. Roberto, almost his first words to me were, I'll get you in the Champions League. And that is extraordinary for a man who doesn't know much about the football club from the inside, but had obviously studied the football club, had obviously looked at what we've been doing over the last few years has obviously uh, recognised what David Moyes is, the massive achievement David Moyes has made. But he sat and talked to me, and he showed me how he beat Manchester City at Wembley. He got out his little card and he said, I did this, this and this. And I'd gone to Wembley on that day, and sat amongst the crowd, not to see Manchester City um, and Wigan, but to look at Roberto. And I watched him and studied him, and he came in to my office. And look, I'm not going to say to you, it was like David Moyes. He got me in 30 seconds. It took him at least 45 seconds. And uh, But he, he understands the game. He understands Everton. He understood Everton. He told me all about our history, all about our players, all about what he wanted to do. And it was, a, it was a terrific meeting, and I think, well, it was the start of a couple of terrific meetings. But all I can tell you is, when you know, you know. And there were other things that had to happen, and other people, and uh, they were great. The people I've interviewed, including the three lads from this football club, who came and sat in my office, and we talked Everton, and we talked to the parts they played, and you all know who they are. Stubbsy, David Way, and Phil Neville. And they shared their passion, and all that was, again, humbling for me, and awesome, and awe-inspiring. And I wish 
50,000 Evertonians could have been there with me for all of these meetings, but 50,000 of them would have turned around and said, him. He's inheriting a very good squad. How confident are you that you'll be able to keep hold of the best players in that squad and perhaps even give him a few quid to sign a few new players as well? I'll give him a few quid to sign a few new players as well. Uh, I'm not Dave Whelan. I've not said to uh, David, David, come and have it. Um, you know, you can. I've said exactly the opposite to David. I said, David, you know, we all know the situation at Everton. We all know there is a player has got a, an escape clause, but the others are not for sale. And, uh, you know, I'm as in love with this football squad as any Evertonian sitting here, any Evertonian out there. They are this club. We don't want them to go. They, they have worked massively hard for this club. Roberto and I have talked from the station. He doesn't want them to go out. We don't want them to go. He's got all of their phone numbers. He's going to be on the phone to them all saying, we don't want you to go. And they don't want to go. Nobody said, not one person has even half indicated to me that uh, the change will mean a change for them. Exactly the opposite. They all seem totally committed to it. So... Yeah, I'm confident that that squad plus uh, some Roberto signings will form this football club squad for next season. What about your backroom staff, Roberto? What are your plans there? Well, obviously we need to, uh, once we get the press conference out of the way, it's a start working and there are many things that we need to look into detail. I want to meet everyone that at the moment is working at Everton Football Club and obviously we'll need to make sure that we get a, a really strong team on, on the day to day and it's going to be uh, a large amount of my team and the back, backroom staff that they're going to they're going to come uh, with me and just finally from me what is your promise to Everton fans we know that you like to play good football we know that you're ambitious you've won a trophy now with Wigan and they expect more of that and even more with Everton well I think the chairman hasn't put any pressure on me, he's just he wants to get to the Champions League. So. <laughs> Quite simple to take this job, really. I think it's, it's important. The fans, the fans need to know that they are the most important part of this football club and we will need them to lead us. And we've got a very strong team. I think what David Moyes has done in this football club is set uh, a real high standard. And over the next few months we need to get together and we need to make sure that we are a winning side and we are a very strong side that we can carry on looking to achieve more. I think finishing in the top six was a magnificent achievement for Everton and, and there's many things that we need to carry on building if we want to uh, improve that. So clearly the fans are uh, ready to see a team that they're going to give their all, that they're going to give their hearts and we're going to be uh, competitive in everything we do. But making sure that they are the most important aspect of this football club and they need to be ready to, to push us ahead. I think the one thing, if I may just join in, that we did discuss at the first meeting was that we didn't want the standards and the positions that David had uh, achieved to slip and uh, we want to build from there. And uh, that is really the, the, the only... Um, statement we made to each other that we actually want to take this club forward and I've got to play my part in that too and I said to him I just thought, look I don't want to be the man that comes here and asks you to get me uh, the Champions League number one position unless I can support you so myself and the board will be doing all we can to support our new manager financially Hello, John. I'm Richard Conley from BBC Given that message that you gave to the chairman in that meeting, would you say that same message to fans now? You're going to take Everton to the Champions League? Well, you need to understand the, the time scale. Remember that in the Premier League there are two clear budgets. I think you've got six teams that they, 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 they're competing uh, in a different financial level than the other football clubs. And that shows you what Everton has achieved over the last few seasons. is incredible. What is true is that not always you need the money to achieve your aims. The only thing you need is the time and you need to be patient enough and just be hard working enough in trying to achieve something. 
obviously the aim of Everton Football Club should be to get into Europe and to get into the Champions League. That doesn't mean next season. That doesn't mean uh, the next next competition that we go into. That has to be the aim of the football club for the future. Because obviously what David Moyes has done over the last 11 years has put that platform in place. That's not going to happen overnight, but and that's not going to happen by having a large amount of finances or money coming our way. That's not the case. In football, you need to be creative. You need to find a way to be competitive, and that takes time. And that's what, as Abertonians, we need to look at the future as a football club that we want to be involved in Europe, we want to be in the championship, but that's going to take process and it's going to take a few steps on the way and we need to have always that dream to fight for. Can I, can I just remind you something that Dave Whelan said in the last few weeks? He said that Burdo could choose to go to Everton or he could wait for one of the big clubs, as he called them. Is, is Dave right? Is this not the club? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to ask him. I don't know what he meant by that. For me, Everton I think he is... said he was winding me up. Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think for me, which is what it what it matters is, I've been impressed already with Everton. Just arriving at Goodison, you get the fans uh, letting you know how special this football club is, and I love that passion. I love that tradition, and I can't wait to get even more involved into what Everton means. But uh, I've got the feeling that I'm joining a football club that, for me, is a big football club and I can't let the football club down and I'm going to make sure that I don't do that. Because the suggestion was maybe that this is a stepping stone perhaps to, to bigger things. Are you confident you can be here as, as long as David Moyes was here? Well, I think it's, it's, uh, that, w- that would be a real success, believe me. If, where do I need to sign to do that? <laughs> I, think, I think what's important, you look, I'm not a kind of person that... It yes is the answer stones. to that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what I want is, is to make sure that everyone is proud of Everton and we can look at the long, long, long term together. Um, and in football, I love building football clubs. The real advantage that I've got is that David Moyes is built this football club and I'm walking into a, a very good position, a very strong position to be the next manager at this, at this football club. So that's, that's a, real, a real exciting project. Just a question for Robert. There have been so many names in the mix and so much speculation about who will take over. How do you feel now that the new manager is situation? I think I'd use, Greg, the word that Roberto and Bill have already used, which is excitement, a real, real sense of excitement. Um, I think we've got a top, top manager, which is exciting. I think we've got an Everton manager, which was obviously really important to us, and that's exciting. But I'm also excited about being able to give Roberto the support that he will need to achieve his objectives. He'll get phenomenal support from the board and especially the chairman. But I would also say he'll get phenomenal support from everybody here at Goodison, and I know all the team here... I'm thrilled by the prospect of working with him and uh, listen, this is a proper football club. Our objectives are all what happens on the field at Goodison Park, so all our efforts to raise money, all our efforts to be more efficient in how we do things, you know, it's all direct at, R- at Roberto, so I think it's a really exciting phase for the club and we can't wait to start to get to work with him. Roberto, you've got a lot of plaudits for the style of football you've played at Wigan. What style of football are you going to play at Everton? Well, this is the winning style. It's important that we... We get our players to be excited about the next the next time at the football club. Um, as I said before, you're looking at Everton last season. They had the best home record, and I think there are reasons for that. I think it's important that the team doesn't lose what they're good at. And I wouldn't say that they are good at something. They are special at many aspects of their game. And what we need to do is is carry on improving. And that's, that's the nature of, of the game. I think it's going to be important that we, we start the season with, with good, uh, fresh signings that they can galvanise the squad, but uh, more, more importantly is not to lose the real big players and the strong characters that we got in this dressing room. Have you looked at areas that where you feel in the squad and the team that needs strengthening? Well, particular? Th- there are, of course, because we, we lost <coughs> players. We had a big... Uh, losing Phil Neville is a, is a big, uh, big gap that we need to, we need to fill. Obviously, it's always exciting when you've got a new captain. For me, Phil Jagielka is going to be a very, very special, uh, not just a footballer, but a, a human being, being at Everton, and he's going to be a real leader. And there are many, many areas that we need to uh, improve. It's, it's not improving, it's just helping the players that we got at the club and, and make sure that we got different options and different dimensions. But the most important thing is to make sure that we carry on performing in the manner that this team has done in the past, because... 
you cannot underestimate finishing in top six in this league in the manner that Everton did the last season. That's a phenomenal standard that we cannot lose. Have you talked about money with the chairman? Well, well enough not. <laughs> no, we haven't. After <laughs> saying that we're going to get to the Champions League, I can't wait to see the transfer kit. <laughs> <laughs> It said 200 something, I don't know what it meant. By that. <laughs> Thank you. you. You shaped a, a club of Wigan from top to bottom in many ways in, in, your, in your image. Do you think you can do that at Everton? Do you need to do that at Everton? Or how difficult is that going to be? No, I, th I think it's a very good question. As I said before, uh, Everton Football Club has got an incredible history, and I can't wait to, to get through that. I want uh, the team to reflect the fans. I want the, the team to reflect the passion, and it's, it's very very simple. As I said before, what David Moyes has done at this football club um, is it sets a real high standard, and we need to carry on in that way. Uh, if I could achieve what David Moyes has achieved in the past, I will be I will be a very very uh, pleased man. But it's, it's it's about the fans, as I said. But all I want is this this football club to be very, very proud of the group of players that we're going to have in the dressing room. And that's vitally important for me to bring the right characters and try to develop that. Have you got your eyes on any of your, your old boys at Wigan? Well, it's always, the, it's, it's always a normal assumption. You, a, a manager moves on and you think that he's going to take players on, and, and that's, that's normal. I think when you get to know a player, you get to know the person, and, and it's important to, to, to bring those players along. Uh, I think it would be a big mistake, uh, a club of, of our of our size at Everton, just to look back at the manager's previous uh, team. Um, we're looking at a, a whole range of uh, world, world, world football. is a big, big market, and we're looking at players and individuals that they can help our dressing room, and that doesn't mean that we need to go back to, to the previous club at all. Just a quick thank you, because all the support in pre-season has been magnificent and in, in the opening game at Norwich, but now we're really, really excited about the first game at Goodison, and I would ask you for your understanding and your patience, but more importantly, just with your relationship, we need to make sure that we are a very, very strong unit looking forward to the season, and that relationship has to be the key of our success. So get ready for the weekend, and thank you once more. Solo lo mejor.